Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. Hi, good evening, cheer one. Can you hear me? Hello, how are you? Yeah, yes, good oh, evening, teacher. Hi, okay, <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so I, I was just setting up something here in, in the computer, guys. My apologies for being late today. Um, well, um, I remember that yesterday that we were uh, working on an activity so that we we're going to complete uh, for today. Um, so if I remember, we watched a video about um, personalities in regarding to jobs, right? Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Okay, very good. So in, um, if I remember uh, the homework that, that, that you had for uh, today, it's a, a description about each personality. And uh, as you know, as we want to practice your English, you are going to be describing uh, two, if you want, or just one um, personality, you are going to give me the definition and what do you find on the internet or in the place that you uh, did the research, okay? So uh, who's going to start first? Or do you want me to choose one? Okay. Who is going to start first talking about the personalities? Okay, uh, we're going to do the, 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 the following, okay? So um, Lorena, uh, give me one number from one to 12. One, two? Twelve. Two, twelve. Okay, eight. Eight. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Currently, my list here, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Marlon. Marlon, Omar, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening, Marlon. Um, okay, uh, just, uh, I don't know if you were yesterday in, in the video conference. You attend the yesterday class? Um, I lost the connection. The last connection. Uh, yes. Where are you working with? 
I mean, I don't, I don't stay in the in the activity. Oh, okay, I see. Um, who are you working with? Who was your Sorry? partner, sir? Um, no, teacher, no estuve en la actividad, no pude trabajar. Okay, okay, I see. Uh -huh. uh, okay, okay uh, Marlon, give me a number from one to twelve. Um, number six. Number six, Elvin. Elvin Agis Agisabal. I guess that's your last name, right? Agisabal. Okay, Elvin. Um. You were working yesterday in the home where I left? Elvin, were you working in the home where that I, I left? Yesterday? I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you listen to me? Yes, I'm listening to you now. Okay. Uh, really, I, I don't have time for the homework, but if you want, I go to try uh, the the description of the personality. Uh, only only in my case, uh, for give the the example. This is one. Okay, we can try. We can try. So um, yesterday uh, we were discussing. Well, we were watching a video about personalities according to uh, jobs. Uh, so we're discussing about that each personality has fo uh, just focused on some specific activities. Uh, for instance, um, yesterday we're discussing about social, uh, the, the ones that are social. Uh, what kind of uh, activities and jobs do you think uh, these kind of people develop? Um. Well, yeah, the social, um, let me see, career ad advising, mm -hmm. because uh, they are different. When you, uh, when you like uh, the different career, uh, mm -hmm. depend what the skill or knowledge do you like to, do, do you like, uh, uh, let me see. Do you like knowledge? Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, oh, I, 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 I say in my case. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. in my case, I prefer uh, an engineer because uh, I like mm -hmm. the I like the the, the number the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I like the the chemical and you can see the difference um difference uh material you can see it and and you uh, you um you can see uh, the different tropic and when you study and the grow up with the 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 knowledge, mm -hmm. mm, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it, I don't know, listen to me well. Yes, I, I was just listening, that, that, that's all. Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, Um. Uh, I want to ask you, to you, Lorena, um, I don't know if you remember what are the careers for social people. For social people, yes. uh, the careers are like being doctors, <laughs> teachers, uh -huh. a, a work, a person who works with others, mm -hmm. uh, like maybe nurse. Uh, okay, good. Uh, worker, social workers. Um, I don't know, all of that, all those people oh. that that we have to work with people that requires to help someone else right yeah okay or share information with them okay very good so let's listen to angela 
Okay, Angela, um, let me, uh, okay, let, let me show you this. Um, what do you consider uh, are the perfect jobs or activities for people that are artistic or that the personality is uh, to be artistic, something like that? Uh, is, is a person um, maybe um, uh, someone uh, uh, you have um, different uh, personality maybe in different activities. Okay, the, the uh, example, uh, uh, um, who uh, uh, um, que puede... <laughs> okay, uh, que just puede... just try to try to in other just to to, to give a um, better description of it. Um, what do you consider an as artistic people? Uh, uh, what, what I mean is, uh, what is according to you, what is the personality that artistic people must have? Artistic people, uh, creative, creative. Make their creative. Okay, we're yes, good. Um, what else? Um, um, um in genius maybe okay um, good uh, yeah I, um i se me va <laughs> i escaped me the idea uh, mm -hmm. um i no remember the Mm -hmm. uh, describe uh, artists. Uh, okay, no, no, don't worry, don't worry. You have mentioned uh, some important things about yes. artistic people. So uh, you mentioned that they are creative, uh, uh, and also that we can we can add that uh, they like to imagine things. Uh, like yes, uh, imagine, uh, yes, uh, that that's another uh, creative, characteristic. Of them. Creative, yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Only that. <laughs> Only that. Okay. Only and that. Uh, also, uh, a particular characteristic about this uh, kind of people is that uh, I mean, are uh, is um, that they uh, usually focus on a single project. Um, yeah. If you if you uh, just see some example of it, um, what about the the people who write sounds? Okay. They focus on a specific project in order to write a song. Um, a song, I mean, uh, for instance, the ones uh, that like to paint, they focus mostly just on a specific project until they finish. So they, they are like that. They just focus in, in a single thing first and, and they go developing things like that, okay? So, and okay. also, um, I remember uh, the last time that, um, uh, we're discussing about this topic. Uh, some careers that arti artistic people like to do is like landscaping, graphic design, web design, things like that. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Architect, maybe engineer. Or something. Yeah, the, the, yeah, those are good ones too because um, they. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. The painter, the, uh, the foreign. Oh. Mm -hmm. They create things, right, in order to build something. Yes. 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 And also they focus on a specific thing first in okay. order to develop. Okay, very good. So um, and then we're discussing about conventional and some other personalities that we have in order to um, identify jobs based on personalities. Okay. So today we are going to, oh, uh, yesterday I, I forgot to uh, share to you. Give me just one moment for the search jobs and occupations. Okay. Here we have.
Okay. Um, we I'm, what I'm going to do right now is to share a link where we are going to have a, a word search is related to jobs. We're going to get some vocabulary there in order to complete the lesson that we're um, discussing yesterday. Um, there you have. So go to that link. I'm going to share here my screen to you. Give me just one moment. Let me see. Okay, here we have. And this is occupations, jobs and occupations. Uh, can you see my screen now? You see my screen? Yes, no. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, very good. So, um, okay, here we have. Okay, there you have, this is a word search that you're going to be working on. Um, we have different uh, occupations like engineer, doctor, teacher, florist, uh, fishmonger, dentist, nurse, tailor, pilot, uh, diver, driver, plumber, carpenter, fireman, policeman, judge, lawyer, clerk, a baker, chef, banker, and barber, okay? So there you have a list of different occupation jobs that uh, people usually usually do. So um, what you're going to do here with this worship first is to solve it, okay? We're going to see uh, who is the best one solving this kind of activities. Uh, at the end, you're going to receive like a notification with uh, the seconds that you uh, invest um, in order to develop this activity, okay? You are going to share that screen, that uh, you, well, and a screenshot of that screen uh, to the WhatsApp group. And um, after that, you have to, in, in a piece of paper or in your notebook, you need to work, uh, I mean, you need to write down there in your notebook um, the meaning uh, of that word in Spanish, okay? Uh, what means engineer, doctor, teacher, florist, some of them are so easy, you're going to identify it easily, but um, the others probably you haven't heard about it, about, about that. So uh, basically what you're going to do here, th there are two things. So the word search and translate each occupation to into Spanish, okay? Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes, okay, very good. What about the rest? Lorena, yes. yes, okay, good. Excellent, so uh, we're going to invest 10 minutes solving this activity, uh, no more than that, because we have to move on to the next lesson. Okay, so 10 minutes, that's mean that we're going to finish at um, 8.33, okay? 8.33, no more than that. And remember, you need to share the a screenshot um, about the, the, the notification that you're going to receive at the end uh, of the activity, okay? With the seconds that are count at the end, okay? Lorena, are you talking to me? Okay, guys, if you need help, just let me know. I'm here in order to assist you, okay? Whenever you want.
came the finish you can play the activity not yet hello can you hear me yes teacher yes teacher okay very good uh, but i haven't seen oh just let me check oh yes uh, now i see so i'm just checking here right now the seconds that you have for for this activity let me check um i have one that it has um let me check here I don't know your name. It says abogado y notary. I don't know you. I, I don't know what's your name, sir. Because I, I remember there's someone that. I am teacher. Yeah, Jose. Oh, Jose. Okay. Oh. I you had hear your name because I, I don't know how. I haven't had your telephone number here. Give me just one moment, Jose. All right. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, Jose had swore um, 166 seconds. Very good. Um, then Lisette Castillo it has four hundred seconds. Very good. Um, Jancy, 406. And Diana, uh, 442. Lorena, um, I can see. Ah, uh, you haven't finished yet, right? Okay. Once you finish, share uh, the seconds that you that you have. Okay. Uh, right now, the winner is Lisette Castillo because she has a uh, four hundred seconds. Okay. Very good. Oh, <laughs> Lorena, you're missing just one, just one word. Dentist, right? <laughs> okay, you're almost done. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, guys, uh, we're going to move on. So uh, it, time has already passed in order to develop this uh, activity. Just let me stop here and share uh, my screen. And also share the um, lesson that we're going to be working on today. Um, okay, we're going to start working in the lesson 2.2 and we have an objective for it. Uh, for it. And it says, by the end of this class, participant, uh, participants will learn how to use jargon phrases as subjects and objects, okay? So uh, first of all, what we are going to do here is to watch this video. We are going to see the structure um, and we are going to see how um, jargons work, okay? Then I will be asking you, uh, what is jargon? And also I will give an explanation about that, okay? So uh, pay attention to this video and then we're going to um, be discussing about it, okay? Um, if you cannot hear the audio of this video, just let me know. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice daring phrases. 
And so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going into details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. Well, and the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to. All right, and then and of course there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence, so it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object, and so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, pain is not the verb. It's, it's, it's the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example, and if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb pay, I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing, and then we have paying, improve, and of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that E, for example, and then we add ING, and so we have improving. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds, and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence, and a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And of the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be, but the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence, and so becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add s to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today, right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that 
as the object of my sentence. And so there it's a verb, and the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense, they should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what isn't polite, what is popular in your country, what destroys the environment, and what uh, can be dangerous. Alright teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me, learning math gives me a headache. Using yourself on in class isn't polite. Playing basketball is popular in my country. Burning fossil fuels destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Now let me talk about the last part of our class and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so let me give you a few examples about that. So we heard politicians say, I suggest improving our schools. So as you can see, the suggest is our verb and improvement becomes the object of our sense. So it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people. This is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use gerunds as objects. So they both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then they, I mean, you could you could have said uh, different things. And so what I would also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. But I would also like for you to try this out as well. So this is quite easy. Hi, John. I need a ride to the airport. Would you mind taking me? I don't mind taking you. I'm heading that way anyways. Dad, can I go outside and play? Have you finished doing your homework? Why did Javier look so sad today? I think he really misses being away from home during holiday. Okay, my, my apologies. I was just checking here that I was mute. <laughs> okay, my apologies, guy. Uh, well, I, I was just telling you that um, there you have all the information that you need about gerunds. Okay, if you want, you can watch it again. Uh, but also, I will be giving you um, some other examples and also meanings and uses of uh, gerunds. Okay, and I was asking to you, Lorena. Okay, Lorena, do you know what is a gerund? What is a gerund? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's when you are doing the activity at the, same, at the moment that you're talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, something you like use, that. You use when the verb with the verb to be, and always what and some and some verbs too, like a uh, love, mm -hmm. like a uh, mind. You use always ing form after that. Okay, very good. Good, thank you. Um, Angela. Okay, Angela. Um, how do you form 
uh, gerund? Um, uh, the gerund uh, always go to the, the beginning, maybe? Uh, okay, sometimes the gerund goes at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, very good. Yes. Um, Isaias, um, how do you form a gerund? The gerund is formed with the verb and ing. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, guys, uh, remember, gerunds are verbs, verbs that end in the ing form. The situation with this kind of word is that they are not working as a verb in a sentence. When we are talking about gerunds, um, we are talking about nouns, okay? We are talking about something that is working as a subject, okay? Um, in the meaning, uh, so I, 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 as you can see here in, in all the examples that, that I was just showing you uh, in this video, the meaning um, of each word there was just working as a noun, okay? It's not working as an action. It's not working as an action, it's working as a noun. Um, also, I, I just want to add this information to you because it's going to be helpful for you, okay? Um, so uh, I don't know if it was Angela or Lorena that says that um, sometimes urines, um we put it at the beginning of the sentence, okay? But there are some other times that we use it uh, as direct objects or as an indirect object. Um, well, each uh, structure has a specific um, a formula for it, okay? Um, take a look at this because we're going to go back in this video. Uh, a couple of more examples. Here. Okay, here we have, take a look of this. Um, in this part, we have the word choosing. Choosing is a verb with the ing. There, it's not working as, a, as an action, okay? It's working, it's working as a noun, okay? Choosing a candidate takes time. When we, just let me use the annotate here because I want to highlight something important here. When we identify this part, we're going to say that we have a gerund phrase. Why do we have a gerund phrase? Because choosing a candidate, it's working as the subject of the sentence. What is going to be the verb here in this sentence? Can you please just, uh, it's going to be takes, okay? Takes is going to be the verb, the action, okay? And time is going to be just an extra information that we want to add, or if we, want, if we don't want to add it, well, we, we, don't, we don't add it there. But uh, this is just an extra information that is usually uh, name of uh, um, the, the object of the sentence or sometimes the complement of the sentence, okay? There. So choosing is going to be the germ, okay? Verb plus the ing, that is not working as a verb. Then we are going to have the other option here um, that is using the gerund as a direct object, okay? Uh, when we use a direct object, um, that's mean that the action um, of the verb, okay, in, in, in this kind of sentence, um, it well it, the, the action there, um, the gerund is receiving it because um, we're just using it as a noun. When we say in that uh, in that sentence, the, one, the ones that we have there, it says, "I enjoy working." Okay, I, I'm the the, the subject here. Enjoy is going to be the verb that I'm using in working. It's no, it's not working as an ing form like in the present continuous, right? So it's not working like that. It's working as a noun. Working, it's going to be the noun that um, the 
uh, of the uh, action that, that I'm I'm developing in uh, in that moment that I'm saying that sentence. Okay, I enjoy. Okay, what working? Okay, um, and well, they have we have the rest of the information there. I enjoy working for the people. Uh, there, there is another sentence that says, uh, "Do you resent paying higher taxes?" So paying is just a noun that we are using there in order to refer to the action, okay? But it's not working as an action. I have some other examples uh, as a direct subject. Um, just let me share here my uh, whiteboard and I'm going to share each of them. Okay, for instance, uh, when we have a direct object, we can say uh, my sister avoids cooking. Okay, what is the gerund there? Cooking. You, cooking. Cooking, right? Okay, cooking, cooking. because we're talking about the action, but it's that action is not performing in the sentence as a verb, okay? We are referring to that action, but it's not working as a verb. What is the verb that we are using in that sentence? Avoid. 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 Okay. So, and what is the subject? My sister. Please My please. sister. So we have subject, verb, mm -hmm. and complement. So the action in this case, uh, the, the ones that is receiving it, the, the, the action of the verb is cooking. Okay. My sister avoids cooking. So when we have that structure there, we're going to say that we have the direct objects. Okay. Uh, because it's when the urine is receiving the action in the sentence. Okay? Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then, um, so we have the other part that is urine as an indirect object. Okay? In this case, the, the action, um, it's, uh, well, the, the urine is not receiving the action there. So, when we're talking about indirect objects, that means that uh, in the minute of uh, the gerund here, the gerund is going to indicate who, whom, or what the action is direct forward, okay? For example, um, for example, I have a sentence here that it says, I'm, uh, just let me write it down here. I made a studying studying my priority. Okay, there you have. I may studying my priority. So we are referring to the studying um, as as a urine. But the action uh, that we are referring, uh, that, that we are using with the word, so the urine is not receiving it. So why? Because we are just um, identifying the urine as a noun there, um, as an activity that I did uh, as my priority, okay? So for, for instance, I have some other example here, like, um, uh, just let me write it down here. Uh, I never gave reading enough a chance. Okay, enough. Wanna say no? Okay, enough of a chain. chance here. There you have. I never gave reading enough of a chance. Okay, so this is another uh, germ that we are using as indirect objects. Okay, why? Because if we just um, uh, create a question here, who? Okay. Who? Who is not giving uh, reading enough of a chance? Or who? is uh, meeting a studying uh, his or her priority. So 
I'm go the, the answer is going to be I. Okay? The answer is going to be I. Uh, for instance, if I use another subject, uh, my mother spent her life teaching. Okay? My mother has spent her life teaching. Who has spent her life teaching? My mother. My mother. Okay. My mother. So when we answer that question about who, about whom, uh, or about what, so that's mean that we are using a urine as an indirect object. But uh, that's the opposite. We are using the urine as a as a direct object because in in, in these uh, direct objects, the action that is receiving, um, I mean the the the, what I mean is uh, the urine is receiving the action that we are using in the sentence. My sister avoids what? Cooking. Okay. Cooking. So the actions, they, uh, I mean, the, the, the urine is receiving the action that we are using there in the sentence. Okay. So if I say, for instance, uh, a, a, just let me think in another one. My teen practice kicking. Okay. My teen practice kicking. Okay. What practice my team? Kicking. Kicking. But we are not we are not using it as an action. We are using it as a noun. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. And also, and also, uh, as you can see there in the in the video, we can use um, some uh, something that is called gerund phrases. Gerund phrases um, are some specific words that we use in order to, to write down a, a sentence, but it, it, the complete composition of work, it's working as a subject. For instance, uh, when I say reading Roman's novel is relaxing, what is going to be the subject there? Reading. Read, no, but, but we are going to use the gerund phrase. And remember, the gerund phrases are composed um, for so, so many words, like would be like one, uh, I, I mean, would it be like two or three words or more than that if we want to add. Okay, so. Repeat, repeat the sentence. Okay, reading Roman's novel, uh, I mean, reading Roman's novels is relaxing. Reading novel, novel roman. Yeah, the reading no reading romance novels is gonna be the subject because this is a gerund phrase. Um, I have some other examples here, like uh, swimming with my friends help me on wind. Okay, so swimming with my friends helps me uh, on wind. Okay, oh, I have another example here. It says, uh, writing email, writing emails is an exchange of ideas. So we are using writing as, uh, as part of the subject, but we are using it as a gerund phrase because it's a gerund phrase. We are adding emails, writing emails. That's what we are referring to. Okay, so. If we want to say this kind of thing, it's like um, when we use when we use like adjectives um, with nouns, something like that. It is a little bit similar, but if you um, verify in each sentence there, even though if we use the plurals at the end, we are not going to use the word um, the, the word in plural. We're going to use the word in singular form. So um, that's mean like a singular third person form, okay? So, because if, if I say, for instance, the, the first sentence I was just showing to you, it says reading novel, uh, reading romance novels, even though the novels, it's in plural, we are going to use the singular form, a, uh, of the word in plu in I mean um, yes it's going to be like singular form of the word in um, third person okay third person singular form if we want to say it like that this is uh, so much easy third person singular form of the word okay so 
That's why we're using is. Is it clear? Yeah, right? Okay, perfect. I'm going to share with you a link where you're going to find more information about this topic. I want you to study because I will be asking you some questions tomorrow. Uh, please read that information because uh, we are going to, uh, I don't know if, have you been in a round table before? No. No? You don't know how, how this activity works? No, I don't. No, okay. Lorena, uh, what about the rest? Have you been in a round table? ¿Han ustedes este, estado en, en, en un tipo de actividad este, que eh, se denomina eh, la mesa redonda? ¿Saben en qué consiste? No. Vale, les explico así brevemente. Dígame. Creo que alguien iba a hablar. No. Vale, les explico así brevemente en qué consiste. Una mesa redonda este, consiste en, uh, bueno, una este, pequeña actividad en la que este, se les entrega a ustedes un tema de estudio, ¿ok? Ustedes leen la información, la estudian y este, un día específico, en este caso el día de mañana, que sería para nosotros, estamos compartiendo información de lo que nosotros hemos estudiado, pero la dinámica es la siguiente. Yo les voy a hacer preguntas específicas del tema a cada uno de ustedes y con la información que ustedes han estudiado, me van a estar respondiendo. Vamos a utilizar como tema principal eh, los gerunds, que es el tema que nosotros estamos desarrollando este día. Ustedes lo van a estudiar. Y el día de mañana, pues, las preguntas que yo les haga a ustedes serían relacionadas a este tema y ustedes me van a dar la respuesta o explicación de lo que ustedes entendieron sobre el uso de los eh, gerunds. ¿Ok? ¿Está claro lo que vamos a hacer el día de mañana? Sí, yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Les voy a compartir ahorita este, en el grupo de WhatsApp el enlace para que ustedes puedan eh, leer la información. Denme un segundo. Vamos a ver. Y quiero que... Dígame. It has some exercise too. Eh, I guess it has some exercises, but just let me check. Because I haven't checked those exercises yet. Um, there you have the link. Just let me uh, check if we have some exercise. We have some examples um, here. Mm, let me see. Mm -hmm. No. Um, in this, okay. Uh, let me just verify here. No. We don't have exercises, but if you need some exercises, just let me um, search some of them and I will be sharing to you in order you can practice them, okay? Please. Okay. Well, uh, that's been all for today. So you see some time is running so fast and uh, we already complete the 60 minutes that we uh, had for this video conference, okay? So I will see you tomorrow. And oh, I have something to mention before leaving. Um, this coming Thursday, we are not going to have classes because you see this is a holiday here in El Salvador. So, um, but we are going to have classes this coming Friday. So instead of Thursday, we're going to be receiving this class on Friday, okay? This is something that I have to mention, probably the, the staff of English Cooperativo is going to share some information to you. Um, so, but there you have the information. Okay. okay? So, okay. you can reschedule things if you want later. Okay? Uh, that's Thank all you. for today. Have a, a nice night and blessings to all of you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.